Hello and welcome to today's lesson on magnetic flux linkage, which is part of the magnetic fields topic in AQA A-level physics. In today's lesson, we're going to look at understanding and calculating magnetic flux linkage. So if we're successful and learn in today's lesson, we can detail the definition and calculation for magnetic flux, understand what magnetic flux linkage is and how it can be calculated, and then calculate the magnetic flux and the magnetic flux linkage of a rectangular coil rotated in a magnetic field, which falls into the following part of the AQA A-level physics specification in the magnetic field section, magnetic flux and flux linkage. So particle accelerators, which we've looked at in previous examples, uh, use magnetic fields to deflect charged particles. The magnetic fields deflect the charged particles as they act perpendicular to the motion of the charged particles. We can visualize the effect of a magnetic field by drawing magnetic field lines between these magnetic poles. So a famous example of looked at already is the magnetic field of a bar magnet but we've also looked at the magnetic field of a current carrying conductor but as any charged object which is in motion can produce this magnetic field. So for example you have a magnetic field of a star which is shown in the following examples. Now, it's important to note that the magnetic field lines of a magnet gives a measure of the total magnetic field. And another name for the magnetic field lines is magnetic flux. So the magnetic field lines gives us a measure of the total magnetic field. So we can define magnetic flux as the total number of magnetic field lines passing through a defined area. Now, in our simplified examples, the area is considered to be perpendicular to that magnetic field. Now, it's important to note that, okay, in this particular situation, we can also call the total magnetic field the magnetic flux. Now, the magnetic flux is measured in Weber's, or WB. Now, this defined area can be any area. Now, it's, it tends to be the area that's the most suitable to the situation or the question asked. So, a definition of magnetic flux is magnetic flux is a measure of the number of field lines passing through a defined region of space, which you yourself can define. Now, the magnetic flux density is a measure of the magnetic field strength of a magnet. So the magnetic flux density is the number of magnetic field lines, the magnetic flux in one meter squared. So it's important to say that the magnetic flux density is a measure of the total number of field lines passing through a defined region of space per unit area, which is an important difference. Now we measure magnetic flux density in Teslas, and since magnetic flux density is the flux per unit area, one Tesla is equal to one Weber per square meter, which is an important idea. Now, the magnetic flux is the total number of field lines in a defined region perpendicular to the magnetic field. The magnetic flux gives an indication of the total magnetic field of a magnet, and we measure this magnetic flux in Weber's, or WB and we give magnetic flux the symbol phi. Now the magnetic flux density is the number of field lines in a region per unit area, so set to one meter squared, which is perpendicular to the magnetic field. The magnetic flux density gives an indication of the magnetic field strength of the magnet. So the magnetic flux density is measured in Teslas and it's given the symbol B in equations. So we can compare and contrast the magnetic flux and the magnetic flux density in a given in situation. Now we can link these two quantities with an equation, which is magnetic flux is equal to the magnetic flux density times by the area. So if we put our symbols in, we can say Weber's is equal to Tesla's times by meters squared. So we can put our symbols in to say thi is equal to B times by A. Now we can rearrange this and make magnetic flux density, or B, the subject. So we can say B is equal to thi over A, and this equation makes sense as the magnetic flux density is the flux per unit area. Now, if we consider an infinitely th infinitely thin shape, such as a 2D sheet in a magnetic field, in this example, we've assumed this shape to be perpendicular to the magnetic field. So we can work out what phi is, the magnetic flux, by doing the flux density times by the area. However, what happens if this shape, if this sheet, is not perpendicular to the magnetic field? Well, we've got to use some trigonometry. So in this example, the shape is at an angle 
theta to the magnetic field as shown on this diagram. Now the component of the magnetic field is now B cos theta because we know cos theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse so cos theta is equal to component over B so therefore B cos theta is equal to our component. So it's important to note that we can now change our equation to consider this angle factor. So now thi or the magnetic flux is equal to B cos theta times by A times by the area. Now this is the full equation which links the magnetic flux and the magnetic flux density in a given situation. However this equation is for a theoretically thin shape. How does the equation work for a wire in the real world? Well okay let's now consider a wire of n turns in a magnetic field. Now when we consider a wire of a thickness the number of turns on the wire has to be considered on both sides of the equation as our n number of turns is basically our thickness factor. So now we can say n thi is equal to b cos theta times by a times by n. So we've multiplied both sides of our equation now by n. So this gives us our equation of n theta is equal to b a n cos theta. Now to symbolize the impact of adding the number of terms of wire to the equation, we actually call n thi another particular quantity called the flux linkage. Now flux linkage is important as it's the linking of the magnetic field with the conductors of a coil when the magnetic field passes through the loops of the coil. So it actually links together the magnetic field and the conductor which is in the magnetic field. So the magnetic flux linkage is the product of the magnetic flux and the number of turns on a coil through which a field will pass through. Now, magnetic flux linkage gives an indication of how many field lines pass through a particular conductor in a chosen region of space. Now, even though turns of wire is a dimensionless quantity, it's just a number, we call the units of flux linkage Weber turns to differentiate between magnetic flux and magnetic flux linkage. So remember, when given an answer for magnetic flux, give it in Weber's, but when given an answer for magnetic flux linkage, we give your answer in Weber turns even though Weber's and Weber turns have the same SI base units. Now, if you look at the equation and you go, well, n thi is equal to B A N cos theta, it's very tempting to cancel out the n value on either side of the equation. However, do not do this because magnetic, sorry, magnetic flux linkage, n thi, is, not, is very important in electromagnetic induction, which we'll look at later in the course, because the induced EMF in electromagnetic induction is directly proportional to the rate of change in the flux linkage for a conductor. Now this is actually Faraday's law of induction. Now it's important to note that flux linkage is altered by the magnetic flux density of the magnetic field, the area of the coil of wire and the number of coils of the wire. B a and n and in addition to that the angle cos theta between the flux and the area also reflects your flux linkage which in layman's terms is the number of field lines a conductor will cut in that chosen region of space so the greatest flux linkage occurs when the area of the coil is the largest possible you've got the greatest number of coils in the wire and the magnetic flux density of the magnet is at its highest whilst the flux and the coil are perpendicular to each other because because in these situations, the number of field lines passing through the conductor is at its highest value. So what have we learned in today's lesson? Magnetic flux is defined by the equation thi is equal to B A, where B is normal to A. Flux linkage is N thi, where N is the number of turns cutting the flux. And flux and flux linkage passing through a rectangular coil rotating the magnetic field are given by the equation flux linkage is equal to N thi B A N cos theta. So if we've been successful and learnt in today's lesson, we should be able to detail the definition and calculation for magnetic flux, understand what magnetic flux linkage is and how it can be calculated, and finally calculate the magnetic flux and magnetic flux linkage of a rectangular coil rotated in a magnetic field. So I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson where we've looked at magnetic flux linkage in the magnetic fields topic of AQA A-level physics. Thank you very much for listening and have a lovely day.